The Harold Perry Show. <laughs> and now, Harold Perry as Honest Harold, the homemaker. it's a warm, moonlight night in the little town of Melrose Springs. The kind of romantic evening when it's nice to go canoeing on the lake with your best girl. And that's just what Honest Harold is doing. Uh, isn't this nice, Flora Bell? Oh, yes. I could just float along in this canoe for the rest of my life, couldn't you? Well... Might be kind of expensive. It rents for 50 cents an hour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you. Only kidding. It's only 30 cents. <laughs> How? Yeah. I'll bet you're just getting awful tired just paddling and paddling. Why? Oh, yeah. Guess I'll stop a little while. <laughs> yeah. Now, what shall we do, Flora Bell? Well, it's such a romantic night. Yeah. And here we are, all alone. Yeah. And now, both your arms are free. Yeah. <laughs> so why don't you play your ukulele and sing? <laughs> now, come on, my cute little old troubadour. Well... All right. Why do I love you? Why do you love me? Why should there be two As happy as we? Can you see The why or wherefore I should be the one you care for You're a lucky girl uh -huh. I am lucky too All our dreams of joy Seem to come true Maybe that's because you love me Maybe that's why I love you. Oh, how I do declare you're another Mel Tome. Who? You know, the Velvet Fog. Ah, uh, now just call me the Muslin Mist. <laughs> <laughs> Flora Bell. Yes. How about a little kiss? Now, Harold. You better kiss me or I'll rock the boat. Harold. <laughs> Harold. Well, I can't swim. I guess I'll just have to kiss you. Hey, you really know how to kiss. I really know how to swim, too. <laughs> well, that's good. I don't. <laughs> Why do I love you? Why? Well, good morning. Good morning, son. Good morning, Marvin. Hi, Harold. Sorry I'm late for breakfast, Mother. Oh, that's all right. Here's your coffee. Ah, thanks. Did you have a good time last night? Oh, yeah. Flora Bell and I went canoeing on the lake. Uh, uh. <laughs> Marvin, eat your farina. You just wait, my boy. One of these days, you'll be taking an interest in girls. No, I won't. Girls are goofy. <laughs> I'll fix your egg, Harold. Yeah, thank you, Mother. Oh, excuse me. Somebody's at the door. Hello. Oh. 
Hello, little girl. Are you Mr. Ham? Yeah. Is it Girl Scout cookie time again? Oh, no. My name is Susan Moore. May I speak to Marvin, please? Marvin? Oh, of course. <laughs> Come right in. Thank you. <laughs> He's just having breakfast. Marvin, there's a little... Uh, Marvin! That's funny. He was here just a minute ago. Now, where could that boy... Marvin! Isn't he here, Mr. Ham? Well, he must have gone out the back way when he saw you. I mean, before he saw you. <laughs> well, I just want to remind him of my party this afternoon. Your party this afternoon? <laughs> Funny he didn't mention it to me. Well, I know he'll be happy to come. I'll tell him you were here. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Ham. Yeah? Tell Marvin I want him to come especially. <laughs> <laughs> He's awfully cute. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I'll tell him you came by, Susan. Goodbye. Goodbye. Cute. Now, where is that boy? Marvin? Here I am, Harold. Oop. What are you doing under that table? Hi. Come right out of there, young man. Yes, sir. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? Hiding just because little Susan came to the door. She's goofy. <laughs> Marvin? Why didn't you tell me she invited you to her party this afternoon? Because I'm not going. What? Who wants to go to a party with girls? Now, Marvin, all little boys go to parties. That's part of growing up. Do I have to grow up today? <laughs> well, you have a lot of fun. You play games and dance. Carol, I just thought of something. I can't go to the party. Why not? I don't know how to dance. Oh? Too bad. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to get out of it that easy, young man You're going to practice dancing, and right now Who am I going to dance with? Me What? You heard me Just a minute, I'll put a record on Ah, oh, gee Yeah, here we are Avalon with Paul White That's a real snappy number yeah. Well, come on, Marvin Come on, Marvin Ah, oh, Harold Give me your hand the other one, I'll lead. All right. And now follow me. la -dee. Here we go. la -do. Marvin, pick up your feet. And stop working your arm up and down. You're not pumping gas. <laughs> Harold, I can't do this stuff. Yes, you can. Come in. Howdy, Sonny. Oh, hello, Mr. Walker. Is your mother... Well, look at those two. Arthur and Murray. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. Hey, Marvin, is that the prettiest partner you could find? No, but wait till I turn off his leg. <clears throat> Say, Sonny. What is it? How about saving the last waltz for me? What? <laughs> it's the sweetheart waltz. <laughs> <laughs> My wonderful wife. <laughs> look, look, now, wait a minute, Walker. Yeah. <laughs> Mother's in the kitchen. Why don't you go out there and stick your head in the oven? Okay. But I'll be back for our wash, Genevieve. <laughs> oh, what a character. Let's ignore him, Marvin. All right, we'll try it again. Carol, I can't learn how to dance. Yes, you can. No, I can't. I won't go to the party. Yes, you will. I want to go. Now, Marvin. <laughs> Oh, why do I get into these things? Harold. Yeah? What is it, Mother? Marvin is still in his room. Oh? Why don't you go in and talk to him? I'm sorry, Mother, but I don't think I should. There's no reason in the world why he shouldn't go to that party. He's just being childish. But, Harold, he is a child. Huh? Well, that's no excuse. Well, all right, Harold. I guess you know best. <laughs> guess Mother's right about Marvin, though. He's probably just shy. I didn't help any being so harsh with him. But if I acted a little nicer, showed him how much I really like him, he'd be glad to go. Sure. Marvin. Hello, Marvin. Hi. <laughs> Marvin, I, I'm afraid I wasn't very understanding with you. That's what I mean all right. is, huh? That's all right. Well, I'm sorry. You know, I, 
I was young once myself. Yeah. I saw your baby picture in the album. <laughs> yeah. That was the one on the bearskin. I was the bearskin on the right. <laughs> <laughs> Marvin, look, I've been thinking. I ought to raise your allowance with inflation and everything. So instead of 50 cents a week, I'm going to give you 65 cents. Sort of an escalator clause in your contract. Gee, thanks. That's all right, my boy. And oh, yes, you're supposed to mow the lawn next week. Well, just forget about it. I'll do it myself. You will? Sure. Now, Marvin, will you go to the party this afternoon? No, I won't. Oh, <laughs> Marvin, your escalator just went down to 50 cents. <laughs> We will return for the second act of our story, Honest Harold, in just a moment. Just a little later on CBS Tonight, star trumpeter Louis Armstrong, trombone maestro Jack T. Garden, and the lovely young singer Teresa Brewer will pay a visit to Bing Crosby. Tonight on CBS, you'll also hear the heavyweight fight in Detroit between Clarence Henry and Embrell Davidson, which reminds me, it's only a week from tonight when Ezard Charles will be defending his heavyweight title against Joey Maxim. And naturally, you'll get this holiday special exclusively on CBS. Yes, the Bing Crosby Show and the Wednesday Night Fights are heard on most of these same CBS stations. Oh, and be sure to listen for Harold Perry's important announcement at the end of tonight's program. And now back to Harold Perry as Honest Harold, the homemaker. Well, Honest Harold is having his troubles with little Marvin. The boy has been invited to little Susan's birthday party this afternoon, but he's too shy to go. Right now, Marvin is in his room, and Harold is just entering his office at the radio station. Uh, what am I going to do with that boy? Afraid of girls. Why, when I was his age, I didn't stay away from girls. They stayed away from me. <laughs> yeah, should have been more like my old pal, Walter O'Keefe. Come to think of it, he's celebrating 21 years in radio. He looks older than that. <laughs> oh, well. Hello, Mr. Ham. Yeah. Well, hello, Susan. What are you doing down here? Well, I wanted to talk to you. Your mother said that Marvin isn't coming to my party. Well, uh, we're having a little difficulty with him, Susan. You see, he's kind of shy. But he's just got to come. You know something, Susie? I think you have a little crush on Marvin. Well... <laughs> I'll bet they have a giggling good time together. <laughs> Mr. Hemp, I think Marvin likes me, too. Huh? What makes you think so? Well, every time he sees me at recess, he throws rocks at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sounds pretty romantic, all right. <laughs> well, at least it shows he's interested. Oh, oh it does that. <laughs> well, Susan, it's time for my broadcast now. I'll speak to Marvin about the party when I go home for lunch. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for dropping over, Susan. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, and tell Marvin hello for me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what Marvin's got, but he sure got it. <laughs> uh, well, I'm not going to stand for any more nonsense from Marvin. Little Susan is really going to be hurt if he doesn't show up at her party, and by George, he's going to go. Mother, I'm home. Hello, Harold. Oop. Oh, hello, Marvin. Now, my boy, about this party this afternoon. Oh, I'd like to go, Harold. Huh? I'm sure it will be a very nice party. Well, that's more like it. I'm glad you changed your mind, my boy. Well, better go right in and dress now. It's almost time. Harold, I'd like to go to the party, but I can't. What? Why not? Mr. Schroeder offered me a job delivering groceries this afternoon, so I took it. Oh, my goodness. Well... Guess I better get started down to the grocery store. Yeah, doesn't that... What a sneaky thing to do. Just a minute, Marvin. What? I just had an idea. You go right in and get dressed for that party, young man. But, Harold, who's going to deliver the groceries? I am. What? You made a good try, but it didn't work. Too bad. Uh, 
Atlas delivering groceries in my Essex isn't so bad. <laughs> that last lady gave me a piece of pie. Lemon meringue. <laughs> Let's see. Who's my next stop? Well, Florabelle. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Uh, let's see here. Carton is sure heavy. Guess Florabelle's on her watermelon diet again. She'll certainly be surprised to see me. I'll steal a little kiss at the back door. Grocery boy! Just a minute. Oh, dear. I'll open the screen door for... Well, hello, him. Hello, Florabelle. <laughs> Well, what on earth are you doing delivering groceries? Well, it's really Marvin's job. I'm just helping him out today. Oh, well. Uh, come on in. Yeah, thanks. Uh, let me see now. Oh, yes, I, I guess you can just put them right here on the table. Yeah, all right. Right down there's fine. Good. Yeah. Oh, my. You make a cute little old grocery boy in that apron. <laughs> You know, this apron belongs to Mr. Schroeder's oldest boy, Tubby Schroeder. Oh, <laughs> uh, well now, I suppose you're just busy as a bee delivering all those vegetables and things. Well, sort of. You know what they say, the rutabaga must go through. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear me, that is too bad. You know, Harold, I was hoping you'd, uh, you'd have a little time to spend with... Me? Well, it wouldn't hurt to give my Essex a little rest, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and now then, uh, you're sure you're not in a hurry? Nah. <laughs> Good. Then you can just tote my old washing machine down to the cellar. Huh? <laughs> oh, now it'll just take a minute for a big, strong grocery boy like you. But, but... Florabelle, I'm a substitute. Oh, now, come along, Harold. There it is. I'll just go on and open the cellar door for you. Ugh, trapped. Looks like a big fella, too. Well. Uh, Harold. Yeah? When you get it down there, put it in the corner by the croquet set. Yeah, croquet set, yeah. Well, I better get in front of this thing. Kind of ease it down the steps. You want me to push it? No, no thanks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here it goes. Eef. Oof. Oof, oof. <laughs> oh, zoink. Yipe, I'm drowning. What's the matter, Harold? Florabelle, why didn't you drain the water out of this thing? Oh, for God. Now, wasn't that silly of me? Yeah. <laughs> Soapy, too. <laughs> Ooh, bubbles. <laughs> well. <laughs> Getting heavy. <laughs> I'm slipping. Oh. <laughs> in the cellar in somebody else's house. <clears throat> Made it. Harold? Yeah? Uh, now that you're down there, would you mind bringing up the summer sofa? <laughs> Do you see it, darling? See it? I'm lying on it, darling. <laughs> Call me in an hour, Flora Bell. <laughs> old Doc Yak Yak mowing his lawn. <laughs> Is he going to be surprised to see me? Hello, Doc. Oh, hello, huh? <laughs> well, pinch my paw and call me Doberman. <laughs> Look at our new grocery boy. Now, all right, Doc. I'm doing this because Marvin is... I know, her. Your mother told me. <laughs> well, I'm in a hurry, Doc. I'll put your groceries right down here and... What's that? Oh, it's just Arthur, my goat. Yeah, uh, he helps me with the mowing. Uh -huh. <laughs> he pulls out the devil grass. Yeah. <laughs> Doc, what's he looking at me like that for? Oh, in that apron, he thinks you're the grocery boy, Harold. Huh? He doesn't like him. 
Oh, well, tell him who I am, quick. Arthur, this isn't Tubby Schroeder. It's Harold Ham. Hello, Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> He's still glaring. <laughs> oh, see you later, Doc. Harold, I didn't pay for the grocery. Make it a charge. <laughs> Oop, I didn't mean you, Arthur. Oh, if I can just make it to the Essex. <laughs> Made it. Dent of the door. Oh, well, now it matches the other side. <laughs> uh, well, just one more stop and I'm through. Thank goodness. I'll just hurry up now and... What's that? Old man Walker and his tractor up there, taking up the whole street. Hello there, Mr. Walker. I say. Yeah. Mr. Walker, you're blocking traffic. I say. Oh, hello, Sonny. Will you please pull over or speed that contraption up? Speed up? I got her up to four miles an hour now. <laughs> I've seen people go faster than that backwards. Huh? Backwards? Yeah. Well, okay, here I come. What? Walker! Look out! <laughs> Broke Mrs. Zeigenfuss's eggs, too. What seems to be the trouble, Sonny? I said I could go faster backwards. I didn't ask you to back into me. Oh, my mistake. I thought you back, you said. Well, I am. Don't laugh yourself to death. Look what you did to these groceries. Well, what do you know? Scrambled eggs. Uh. <laughs> Where's the bacon? <laughs> bacon. Very mm. funny. All right, let's get going. Okay. So one of that loose headlight didn't fall off again. Mm, your door sprung open, Sonny. Let me close it for you. <laughs> Walker. Well, guess that was the light that failed. <laughs> light that failed. I heard you. <laughs> uh, certainly glad to get home. What a day. Well, anyway, I bet Marvin's having a good time at the party. Hello, Harold. Mm -hmm. Marvin, what are you doing home? Well, um... You uh, promised me you'd go to the party. I know I did. I got all dressed to go and, well... Well, I just thought of having a dance with girls. I just couldn't. Now, Marvin, there's no excuse for acting like this. I'm sorry. I tried to make myself go. Honest. Now, look here, young man. If you think you're going to get away with this, after all the groceries, I... Uh, uh, all right, my boy. It's going to make you that unhappy. You don't have to go. Thanks, Harold. That's all right. Oh, here's the money Mr. Schroeder paid me for delivering the groceries. Dollar fifty cents. Uh, well, dollar forty cents. He deducted ten cents for the dill pickles I ate. <laughs> and on National Pickle Week, too. <laughs> you keep the money, Harold. You earned it. No, I want you to have it. There. Thanks. Oh, there's the door, my boy. You must be tired, Harold. I'll get it. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I guess I was trying to rush the boy. He's really too young for women yet. Hello, Marvin. Oh, my goodness, Susan. Marvin, aren't you going to say hello? Hello. Sounds like he's going to faint. <laughs> Why didn't you come to my party? Well, um... Why, Marvin, you've got on your new blue suit. Yeah, my, you look handsome. I do? What's this? That suit really brings out the blue in your eyes. Ah! Uh... <laughs> this don't fall for it. Marvin, I saw you pitch in the baseball game yesterday. You did? I think you're the best pitcher in the whole school. Ah! Uh... <laughs> <laughs> How do women get so smart so young? Did you like the way I threw that knuckleball? Oh, yeah. I'd love to know how you did that, Marvin. Yeah, I'll bet she's really dying to know that. <laughs> oh, it's not so hard. You see, I just take the ball like Marvin. this. Marvin? Yeah? Why don't you come to my party? You can explain it to me while we're dancing. All right. That's the slickest piece of work I've ever seen. <laughs> goodbye, Harold. Oh, goodbye, Mr.
Mr. Ham. Goodbye, children. Have a good time. Hey, Susan. After the party, maybe we can get some ice cream sodas. I made a dollar forty cents today. You made it. <laughs> what? Oh well, what the heck? I had all the dill pickles. <laughs> <laughs> Now, here once again is Harold Perry. Thank you, Bob. Before we present our second Honesty Award, I'd like to thank all our listeners for the wonderful mail response. It's kept actor Kurt Douglas, Sheriff Eugene Biscalouz of Los Angeles County, and yours truly pretty busy reading them and trying to make the selections. This week, we have selected Walter Buddy Corumpus of 111 Murray Street, Binghamton, New York. I quote from an article in the Binghamton Press dated May 8, 1951. Walter Buddy Corumpus of 111 Murray Street found a wallet containing $415 at a triplets baseball game earlier this weekend and returned the money to its owner, Bernard A. Petiti. That's spelled P-E-T-T-I-T-E. -T -T -E. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Bernard Petiti, who operates a shoe repair shop at number 5 Main Street. As a reward, Mr. Petiti is going to repair Buddy's shoes free for a year. The triplets management will admit Buddy free to the rest of the team's baseball games this season, unquote. Congratulations, Walter Buddy Corumpus. I hereby dub you Honest Walter and award you a Wittenauer watch, that distinguished member of the Longine Wittenauer family of distinguished watchers. And thank you, Mrs. Robert S. McMahon, the Binghamton Press, and all the rest of you kind people in Binghamton, New York, who wrote to me about Walter. Radio friends, if you know of some outstanding deed of honesty done by some boy or girl, please write and tell me all about it. From the letters we receive, one outstanding deed of honesty will be selected each week, and the deserving youngster will receive a beautiful Wittenauer watch. We feel this recognition will encourage honesty in others and help combat juvenile delinquency. Send your letters to me, Harold Perry, Columbia Broadcasting System, Hollywood 28, California. Harold Perry, Columbia Broadcasting System, Hollywood 28, California. Thank you, and good night. <laughs> You have just heard the Harold Perry Show, Honest Harold. The supporting players tonight included Joseph Kearns, Jane Morgan, Shirley Mitchell, Cliff Arquette, Stuffy Singer, Mary McGovern, and David Light. Norman McDonald directed, and the music was composed and conducted by Jack Meekin. Kind of pretty, too, isn't it? Kind of pretty. Honest Harold, created by Harold Perry, was written by Gene Stone and Jack Robinson. Ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow night on Suspense... Join Jeff Chandler for Fresh Air, Sunshine, and Murder. Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills, will present Jeff Chandler as the owner of a Hollywood health studio who falls for his partner's wife and tries to mix fresh air, sunshine, and murder. Uh, health clubs and murder. Hey, oh, brother. <laughs> Don't miss it on Suspense, tomorrow night on CBS. Stay tuned now for The Bing Crosby Show, which follows immediately over most of these same CBS stations. <laughs> This is CBS, where you meet Mr. Keene, tracer of lost persons, every Thursday night, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>